Well, hello. We'll get started in just a, a minute or two. Give uh, let's see if we get any stragglers coming in. Welcome, welcome. It's the first time I use webinars on air, so bear with me here. We'll get better as time moves on. So how is everybody today? It's kind of weird. I got, I got, you know, I'll move this over here. So that way I'm looking, at least I look like I'm looking at my camera a little bit. All right. So uh, let's give one more minute and we'll get started. I got some good content that I like to share with you today. If you haven't uh, been to my Facebook page at 123daytrade, facebook.com, 123daytrade, go over there and, and, and like that. That would be a, a really cool thing for you to do if you haven't done that. I uh, do a lot of updating there. Now, today we're going to have... Uh, a, kind of a PowerPoint presentation for just a short period of time and then we're going to go from there into the charts so uh, and then we'll uh, talk about the what the rest of the courses will be um, this is the first of three courses that I have planned this is the lab this will be my one and only course in 2015 as I restart my business here in December but I wanted to get this one knocked out and up on the website before launch. So this uh, right now I'm scheduling out December 1st, December 2nd in that area to relaunch um, Night Capital Management, who is now uh, that is now one two three day trade. So, but I still have my same company. All right, so let's get started here. I'm Dave Knight. I uh, I run uh, one, two, three day trade. I also formerly from, well, still have night capital management, but uh, the moniker that most people know me by is either tiger uh, or trade craze. So trade craze is what I'm known at top step trader. And that's where I've spent the last year and uh, see August of 2014. I joined top step trader. And not uh, not as an employee. I'm not paid by Top Step Trader. I just am a trader, just like anyone else that's in the room, unless you're getting paid as a monitor. But I'm not. I don't have any monetary commitments to, or they don't pay me. I'm not a 1099 employee. I don't have uh, the only relationship I have with them is I made funded trader status with uh, Top Step Trader. So I trade OPM, other people's money. Um, so. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we move into the courses and and uh, so this course itself is the beginner course. It's it's how I'm laying out my next um, from here and I'm laying out to March of 2016. This this course right here is our futures day trading beginners course. In about the second week of January of 2016, I want to start an intermediate course. So it'd be a futures day trading intermediate course. And then in March of 2016, I want to tackle, tackle the advanced course. So uh, just so you understand, the advanced stuff is where we'll run into a lot more with the money management. Uh, intermediate, we're going to hit in, in money management. We're going to hit on basics through, the, um, through this course itself, the beginner's course. I'm going to be assuming that you know what futures are to start with. Um, and I'm specifically tailoring my trading strategy and lessons to the market that I like the best, the, the crude oil market, which I believe is the most profitable, uh, most profitable market to be a part of. All right. So let's get moving over here to 
my I'm going to screen share if I figure out how to do this again. Let me move this over here and see if I can screen share the right screen here. <laughs> this will be a challenge in itself right here. Let's see. Okay, I want this screen. I believe this is the one I want. Let me share it. Okay, you should be seeing my PowerPoint presentation. And I'm going to start presenting to everyone. So, I think it's on the wrong screen here. Okay, give me a second here. I think I'm on the wrong screen. Let's try this again. All right, let me stop that. Let's get the right screen up this time. That will help. My uh, little technical difficulties here. <laughs> Thank God I know how to trade. All right, so let's uh, bring this up again. I want to share screen one. Yes, share, present to everyone. All right, you should be able to see it now. So let me get to the beginning of the presentation. All right. Once again, my name is Dave Knight. Uh, I go by David. I go by Dave. I go by a lot of different names, but at Top Step Trader, they call me Trade Craze. That's kind of the email or the Gmail that I've used for years that people have known me by. You can contact me at David at 123daytrade.com right now. Um, this is a picture of my, uh, my boys. This is my oldest son, Sean. This is my youngest son, Brennan. This was about two years ago. It's my wife, Janice. This was last year right here with um, at the, a pit football game. I live in southwestern Pennsylvania. So this is my oldest son, Sean, from last year, and my youngest son, Brennan. So this is the Futures Day Trading Course. So, um, and let's get moving. So, do I have the stuff to teach? This is, if you go to um, Top Step Trader, or if you go to my blog, you'll notice that I, I've highlighted this. I have the newest funded trader interview that happened back. You can actually go to YouTube and listen to it too, by the way. Uh, and this was how, when I made uh, a funded trader status at Top Step Trader, if you have know anything about Top Step Trader, it's it's a very difficult um, combine to win. Uh, I started at the ten thousand level, uh, then I, I had I struggled at ten thousand because of the very low three hundred dollar max daily loss. The five hundred daily max daily loss was a little bit easier to make my trading strategy work. Even though I would finish on the ten thousand on a positive. Uh, I would run into some difficulty as time would go on because of the max daily loss. Now that doesn't mean that you you can't that this trading strategy works even better if you've got more uh, money behind it. I guess or you can widen your stop a little bit. But you know, it, it, I think for my personality and for my trading style, uh, the the best uh, way to trade this this tr strategy with one contract is with the top then just top step trader related is at the 30 the 30,000 combine with um, uh, at top step trader with the $500 max daily loss and this is the trading performance of that of uh, when I made it to uh, a funded trader so um, you can see this as well off of my my website I I this is just a screenshot of what it looks like but it, I was I had actually made it on day seven, I believe, or day six. In the last three days, I was just kind of coasting in. On 
so uh, that's why it would have my anyway. So the profitable day percentage is fifty percent. Mm -hmm. Most important thing that that I want to show you, if you look to the far right, is the average win duration against the average loss duration. This goes back to my belief in the three overall trading rules as traders. Right, number one, you got to cut your losses short. Number two, you got to let your profits run. And number three. You, you got to, got to, got to, you got to take profits on the ride. So that is why you see 40 minutes in the win and only like nine minutes in a loss because I'm not hanging around to lose money. I'm only hanging around to win money. And that's the only reason that I want to trade is, is to win money. So this is just some of my free trading content that you'll find up on YouTube now. This one's actually locked down the uh, futures day trading tips. And this is my brand new strategy that I've put out, a uh, day trading strategy that works, that I will show you where that link is uh, before we end this particular chat itself. So this is the uh, trading strategy that I've, I've put out now. And it's it's uh, one trade a week, like it says. The, the, it just trades one day a week, one time. You, you know your profit target. You know your risk. You know your entry point, exit, and so forth. And the futures day trading tips is is kind of my my pet project right now that I'm working on. I've got seven videos that I've done, plus an intro video, plus me at the whiteboard. So my very very small whiteboard, and the very first time I got in front of a whiteboard too. By the way, it was uh, it was kind of uh, um, uh, I, I I've since I've I've been hunting down a four foot by three foot. Um, um, Whiteboard. So the next time I get in front of a whiteboard, I'll have a bigger whiteboard. So if you watch that whiteboard presentation, uh, <laughs> all I can say about that was it was just it was fun to do. But man, I wish I had a bigger whiteboard. You know, like if you know anything about some of these internet marketers that that they got these big ass whiteboards that that, that go from looks like their whole room. Well, I'm not going to do that. But I, I think a four by three will work just fine. So. This is just some of the free trading content and, and some of the playlists that you'll find out on my YouTube station. Now, what? who am I and some highlights. This is actually me from 1984, my senior picture uh, in, in, um, uh, for playing football. So, yeah, I was a former football and baseball player, and I was just a B student in school. Really, I was just a B, C student. I, 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 I'm not brilliant. I'm just I'm just persistent. I'm a son, brother, husband, dad, and friend to it. So select select few individuals, and I am getting ever so closer to the age of 50. And I put really there because well, I'm closing in on it. I'll be 49 in March, so I'm about a year and too close to 50. I mean, I'm already having to pull my glasses down to the top tip of my nose now to. To read so that's kind of frustrating in itself I've been actively trading since 22 years of age uh, I received a promotional letter about trading at the beginning of time the guy that that got got me the trading bug that's not proper English but the person who started my interest in trading his name was Ken Roberts um, that's who got me started and that's what I believed uh, uh, that I thought that was a really cool thing. You know, I never really made that much money under Ken Roberts in his course. He, he was pretty much a vendor in Vendorland that would, um, I think he made more money and his house was bought on his courses that he sold back in the day. He had a course I think I bought into his $200 course, but I went no further than that. I, I know he had these personal $2,000 courses, but I figured out real quick that, you know, paying a hundred dollars a round turn back in 1995 wasn't the way to go. And I remember moving from there to, to this other trading firm, Rosenthal Collins back in the day. And I went from a hundred dollar round turn to $35 a round turn. And I thought I had hit the jackpot. So <laughs> it was kind of crazy when you think about it and you look back at the past and how much the commissions cost. Now, if you're paying more than five dollars a round turn and you're doing your own trading, you're paying you need you don't need to be paying anything more than five dollars per round turn. And a round turn is 
in and out the market right oh anyway so I got my start as a trader at a big mutual fund company here in Pittsburgh and I call it that was my fastest 15 minutes of my life I mean in the very first part of the morning we were trading 15 billion dollars and and it was the quickest quickest period of life it, it was so much fun the the thrill the, of, of, of getting all that money moved uh, and and having to balance it out that and then the rest of the day it's like now what else do you do so the thrill of of uh, trading is what got me interested in in at the start with and in the end I think that's what kind of hurt me in the in the end uh, so because I have had to put my trading strategy together to stop me from doing things and if that sounds familiar that's I mean that's this the SOHK right the school of hard knocks that I believe in uh, I went into private private money management I started my own company uh, in November of 2007 uh, where I worked as a private trader for a very select few uh, high wealth individuals and then I started one two three day trade to give back to traders in March of 2012 and now Fast forward to 2015, I have restarted again, and uh, I'm 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 lean, I'm mean, uh, I'm I'm much more healthier than I've ever been in my life, and I'm in a good place. So, uh, I appreciate all, all the well wishes that I've got and, and received. So, the Futures Day Trading Beginners Course: What I believe is true in trading. I believe in trends, waves, support and resistance, volume, velocity, volatility. I believe in mass trader psychology, crowds, manias, pan panics, etc. This is my core belief system. We're going to tackle in this. Uh, these trading topics will be tackled in our beginners course. We're going to tackle today. We're tackling the introduction to trading, the basic charting. In lesson two, we're going to handle trends. In lesson three, we're going to handle waves. And in lesson four, we're going to go into support and resistance. That'll be the fourth lesson. So for the next four Wednesdays, today being the first Wednesday, and the next three Wednesdays after this Wednesday, so next Wednesday we're doing trends, the week after that waves, uh, and the week after that support and resistance, and how I see the charts and we're going to build our chart from from the scratch from the ground up so let's get ahead let's go ahead and get to our futures trading chart all right so i set up this chart here it's it's a daily chart and what you see in front of you is is what is called the open high low close part of a chart and if, if you could blow this up, each one of these days is tells a story. And the story that it tells is, is on the left notch, it says, I opened here. And on the right notch that comes out on the right side says, I closed here. And the story is, that if we just look at this trade right here, this trading day right here, which ends up being July 6th of 2015, it opens at 56.85. It's somewhere during the day. It moves up to a high of 56.92. It moves down to a low of 53.87. And somewhere during this day, Right at close at five, it closes at 54.17. This was data from July 6th. So this is a daily chart. When you're looking at the charts and the, and the day, is, as far as my way of looking at a chart, day trading, you only need to go back as far as the day. I don't believe you need to go back. I mean, it's interesting to look back further. But to determine if you want to take on a trade or not, you only need to go back to the day. And that's as far as you need to go back. So what I usually look at is the day. And I go to the 15-minute chart. But before we go to the 15-minute, yeah, I want to show you the same data. And what we're going to look at is the data over here from um, the day prior. So it'll be November 10th. So when we go here to the hour chart, 
Now we're looking at, at and this is the last swing high that the market had, and we trailed off of here. This is an hourly chart. Now this comes back, this right here is November 3rd, and each one of these shaded days is a different day period. So all of a sudden, we've kind of drilled down a little bit to see the data a little bit better to be at, make a, an understanding of what the market did in this case an hourly basis so if we look at november 10th right here what we can see is that market opens up right here at uh, at, at five o'clock eastern time at roughly it opens at uh, 44 10 and it closes over here for the same period of time so basically what i'm saying if we would go back here to november 10th this is showing you November's 10th data right here. Now that same data shown on an hourly chart looks like this. So what we can see on this chart is we open here and the same amount of daily data on an hourly chart, we see that we close right here. And the close on November 10th or yesterday was 4360, or uh, as you're watching this recording, which was uh, November 10th, 2015. So, what do we see about this? So, on the daily chart, what we see on the daily, once again, is that on November 10th, we opened at some point during the day, we moved up. At some point in the day, we moved down, and at the close of business, we closed pretty much right on the low of the trading session. So what we can see on the hourly chart, the same data, is that we, in the overnights, and by the way, the crude oil market opens up, the open outcry, and that, is the, that was the old official title of what the market, when, when it opens, and the people in the pits could start yelling and screaming that when they could start yelling and screaming in Chicago was 8 a.m. Central Standard Time or 9 o'clock Eastern, adjust to your own time zone. Now this market pretty much trades 24-7 until Friday afternoon at 5. It closes and then it reopens again at uh, 5 o'clock Central Time or 6 o'clock Eastern, I believe. I don't trade on Sunday, but it opens up on Sunday evening. And it goes from Sunday evening all the way through Friday uh, afternoon and with about a 15 minute break every day. That's all then outside of that 15 minute break, this market trades 23 hours and was that 45 minutes a day. So that's kind of where we at. And so when you're looking at this hourly chart, you see that these are the hour charts based upon the same data that we saw on daily chart. Now, if we drill down to the 15-minute uh, chart now, which is one of my favorite charts to look at, now we see November 10th a little bit differently. So here is November 10th right here. That's If you look at it on a 15-minute chart, it looks, you see at one, you see a lot more data points coming across, and you see a lot more, <coughs> you see things starting to happen a little bit. Now, this gold line coming across the the, the charts is settlement price this is where uh where they settled the prior day so if i would look back here this is where they decided that prior day settled and this is what that means it's a settlement line like the day prior day that they they said this is settlement price the prior day so this is settlement on the charts itself not not to be confused with the closing this ends up with settlement that happens when the market was was at the uh, roughly at, at the period of time that was prior to the market closing on um, well the the open outcry basically goes from uh, eight o'clock central time or nine o'clock to roughly one thirty two thirty in that period of time so this is where the market closes right here you see this one fifteen bar that's the close of trading for just the 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 settlement price so when you look back here 115 central standard time is the same as 2 
15 uh, Eastern time. So this is the settlement price. This is the price where it closes, in other words. So anyway, so November 10th, we see that we had a nice, like, look like right here, we had a couple trend moves, maybe. It looks like we had this move that went down through here to start with. And then we see a move that comes up through here. And then we had a quick move down, a quick move up. And just looks like a big yo-yo that went around here. Now, I was able to take advantage of, of this move right here that went through and up to this high. If you look at my, my um, blog post from yesterday, you'll see on November 10th that I was able to catch this trade going up through here for 65 ticks, a 65 tick winner. All right. And then my first trade was 11 tick loss and the second trade was a 65 tick winner. So this is the same data that we see. We just see it differently right now. And then on for today's purposes, we're going to drill down to the five minute chart. Now, this is the data that happened from today. So we actually look, we have to scroll back in time to see the same information. So now we see that each time that we move down, we learn a little bit more about how that market traded at a very particular time. Now, with that being said, you know I like the tick chart, but we will handle that on a future video and a future lesson. We'll work with our tick charts. I want to get the basics down first before we get uh, into the more uh, intermediate stuff that, that I believe helps you. So anyway. So here we are in front of the, the, the bar chart again. I personally used to love looking at the bar charts, but I think, and one of the, the things that I think is really cool now that I've been studying and learning it, and it took me a while because I'm like an, an old hat, I don't like to change very much, is looking at, I need to fix the properties here, just give me a second. I like to look at the candlesticks now. So this is a candlestick chart where you could see before we had the open high low close chart. So what we see is 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 the OHLC as it's called. This is what I learned on, but I've become very fond of the candlestick chart. So I like the candlestick chart, and this is what we're going to spend the rest of our lesson today talking about the candlestick chart. Now, the first thing that we kind of want to do with this is we want to determine what is up and what is down as it relates to opens and closes. And the, the, the easiest way to, that I know to do this is to go here and you select your properties or on your own trading station and you change the colors. So on rising color, I, I like to look at that usually in some shade of green. And then falling colors, I like to see that in some shade of red. So all of a sudden, now we got Christmas trees. Now, this green is a little too bright. Let me uh, switch that green to a little darker. And maybe go with a shade. Not so bright red. Uh, we'll keep the red. All right. So all of a sudden, now we see the charts in a different. The green's kind of hard to see. We're gonna keep. We're gonna go with black for green. There, black and red. That 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 shows up better. So now. This is the same data that we saw. Now let's look. Here's candlesticks. Here's open, high, low, close. I'd have to widen it out a little bit. But two of the most important signals that I believe that you need to be looking for and what I want you to start, I guess if you look at your homework that I want you to look for on the five-minute chart, I want you to start seeing the hammers and the hanging mans and um i have done a video on the hanging man and if 
if I can get a screen draw tool out, that would be really cool right now. That's not the button I wanted to hit. So when that comes across, we'll uh, close it out. Sorry about that. So I'll figure out a screen draw tool by the next time we get up and running here. But the arrows is kind of what I want to use right now. We'll use we'll use our arrows to help us. So right here, this bar right here, we can see what I would consider to be a, a, a shooting star, not a hammer, a shooting star. The hammer, this is a shooting star. So when I said hanging man, what I meant was a, a shooting star and hammer, sorry. And this, uh, let's find ourselves a nice, there was a nice hammer a, a, a day or two ago. Ah, here's a good one. And here, let's talk about the hammer first. Let's talk about our candlestick formation and what it looks like. Now, this is a great example of a hammer. What happens here is we have a very short line underneath. It's a very thin line, and this is called the shadow. This part right here is called the shadow. This part right here where it's filled in is called the body. And if you think of it, that kind of makes sense. This is a shadow, a very thin shadow. And this is a fuller uh, a part of it. So what we can tell about this black bar, it's like a green bar. This market opens, opens here. It moves down to a low here. It goes up to a high right there, and it closes right up here on the top of the line. If we look over here at this red line right here, this is the same as, as what we were looking at, the open high low close. What we can tell about this one, this right here, the market opens here. At some point during this market, it moves down. It goes all the way up to here. Well, excuse me, it opens here, excuse me. It opens up here, so I'm sorry about that, I was picking red and black. It opens here, it goes up to here at one point during the trading session, moves down, and then it closes here. That's the, the red line, the red. If you had this looking like this, what I was trying to say is if I had the properties looking like without a color associated to it, It'd be very hard to tell which of these uh, candlesticks is high and which one is the low and which one. Well, we, we can figure out the high and the low, excuse me. But we don't know what the open and the close of the bar is by just looking at black candlesticks across the board. Because, yeah, we can assume that this is a red bar because it's going down. We just don't know officially until we change the colors and the schematics of, of the of the chart itself so when we change it then all of a sudden now we've got a clear picture of what this market is doing so here is the our red line where we see the market opens here and it closes here and on the black like this one right here what we see is the market opens here and it closes up here on this five minute chart so by the way this right here and this right here was a very good um this one here was a really good this is the prior week this was the shooting star that i caught right there so this is a great example of a shooting star and i did a video and the video that i did on the futures trading tips actually handles this particular shooting star so go back to it and you'll see um the, the candlestick formation that I talk about here uh, as well. Uh, so this is the upward swing move with the downward uh, shooting star. So a shooting star, if you watch that video, it goes up and then it comes back down. So it swings up and then comes down. 
And this is what this one does, right? So it opens up here, excuse me, opens here. It goes up at some point, it goes down at some point, and it closes on the lows with a little bit of a shadow underneath. This is the this is the best way to see it when you see one of these long black bars that come across here. And that goes back to another trading video that I I I put out there on the futures day trading tips called the fake out. So if you look at that plus the the one that you're looking at uh, as far as the as I handled the shooting star was the Fibonacci retracement. So if you will go back to that, I know it's a little bit more advanced stuff that we're talking about, but it'll start talk, it'll start showing you what a shooting star and what a hammer looks like. This was a very good sign of a hammer right here. I know it's coming in after the market, but this is the, the best one that I found on the charts when I was looking back in time to find a good example of a hammer, of how it drives it down and then it stops and it pushes back and then it moves back up. So you see the upswing of that. So let's go to our current day. In our current day, what we see is this is what another little uh, Japanese a candlestick formation is called the spinning top. And it's most associated with almost like a doji. If you know what a doji is, in the spinning top, they, th these are uh, what this usually shows a market in indecision. It doesn't know if it wants to go up. It doesn't know if it wants to go down. If we just had this bar to take into account. If we look at this bar right here, here is another great example of an L oh, and a shooting star can can be red or it can be black or green. So here's a, another example of a shooting star. And even though it's it closes up black, it doesn't close higher than the move that move that that made the run up. So you see another little example of some good stuff up here. And then you see it coming down. So right here is kind of a minor hammer. I move this over here. You can see a, a hammer here. The, but this one isn't as strong of a hammer that we saw prior day over. Where was that hammer? Oh, yeah. This is, the, is a beautiful example of. Of, of a shooting star, excuse me, shooting star right here. This is the best example that I saw uh, of a shooting star for a while. So that's why I jumped it and I saw the Fibonacci retracement failure and I was boom, I was in it and I wanted to take that ride. This was a very good example of pushing off the bottom right here for a hammer. All right, so we're back to current day, I believe. Yes. So we see, oh, here's a here's an example of a doji bar. When I say doji, this right here is what you call a doji bar. It's open and its close are the same price. So as you move up in time, it becomes more and more important. So for instance, if this particular doji bar would show up on an hourly chart or a daily chart it would make it would be a uh, more significance than it is on a five minute chart so the the more times you see a signal the more powerful it is as it relates to trade that's what i'm getting at let's see if we can find here's a hammer that fails right here right not every one of them are good trades so we see a push down and we see it pushing up and then we see it falling off too so just because the signals there doesn't mean it's a valid signal so for instance if you would have taken this trade right here you would have maybe uh, maybe carried it up to here if you had a wide enough stop but most likely 
you'd have been stopped out here on this move and swing down. Just because the signal's there doesn't necessarily mean that you can take it. So that's kind of where we want to get to some of the other things that we're going to talk about. We're in our rest of our lessons, we're going to talk about on our next lesson, lesson two, we're going to bring in how to determine the trend. In lesson number three, we're going to bring in um, the the uh, waves and the wave count so you can start looking at waves that's where we'll start bringing in our tick chart in lesson three a little bit more and then in lesson four we're going to handle support and resistance we're going to look at both minor support major support and also we'll be looking at the pivot point study that i like to look at as well on in a nutshell this is the basics of charting i mean it's not real complicated it's either um you i think candlesticks is the best way to to view this particular way of looking at trading and then changing your color scheme to your preference i would i would tell you that you want to be a, a red a color of red so you know or something that makes sense for you on the downside and then you want to look on the upside you know i, I like to look at it as a green uh, signals. For instance, if I look at my tick chart right now and bring it across, you can see I, I like the the black background because it's easier on my eyes. It doesn't hurt my eyes to look at it. And the other ones are are minimized on my trade station, so I don't so they don't hurt my eyes. So this black is 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 it just helps my eyes see it and it pops better for me. Now you see the Christmas trees here, right? We see the red and we see the green. And this is what we're going to get to. By the way, this is where we're going. This is where I'm going to take you to. I'm going to take you over here into the promised land of the tick chart of how to trade this and how I see it and how you can as well. So that's this is where we're going. It's not going to be in the beginning course, but we're going there. If you stick with me, that's where we're heading. All right, so this is where we are right now. This is the candlesticks, but we're going to start working with the support, and we're going to start working with trends on lesson two, waves lesson three, and support and resistance will wrap up our beginner's course. All right, that does it for our presentation for today. Are there any questions at all that I might be able to handle right now? We'll take a couple minutes to see if we got any questions. And if not, we'll call it a day. So one of the things I want to put out here is if you don't know about this yet, this is my new trading strategy. And I want to bring the uh, screencast off and stop screen sharing, right? Ah, there I am. Hey, there I am. My bald self. <laughs> my hey, hey, what's going on? So my bald self itself here, right? So this is my free CL pit strategy. It's the crew. It's it's probably the most powerful trading. Actually, it is. It, I don't know why I'm giving it away for free. I probably should pay make you guys pay a bunch of money for it, but I don't. You know, I never have worked that way. So the crude oil power inventory trade. That's the trade. It actually, I believe, happens tomorrow with the Forex Factory. Uh, I'm done for the week. I, I hit my my uh, uh, 10 days of, of, of the trading goal yesterday, or today, excuse me, and I submitted it, and I'm moving back into funded status again. So I had some issues that that slippage got me, and I had to go and and re rework my way back into funded. So I'm hoping to bypass funded trader prep this time around and get back into making the OPM again. So are there any questions at all? Oh, 
All right. That doesn't look like we have any questions today. That's good. Maybe I did a good job today. All right. So this is obviously recorded here, and you can watch it on YouTube. So this will be up on my YouTube channel uh, after it finishes processing. You can go back and, and, and review it to your heart's content. All right. This is Dave Knight here at 123 Day Trade, and my channel here at YouTube is called Trade Craze. So my son, my youngest son's here. Come on here and say hi. Hello. <laughs> This is that was Brennan. He just got home from school. All right. God bless. Take care. And we'll see you on our next lesson next Wednesday. Bye for now.